Hi guys, I'm Andy from Cruise Master, and today in Cruise Master class, we're going to be talking about what goes into a GVM increase. In today's discussion, I'm not going to get into GVM versus GCM, why you need a GVM increase, how to work your loads out, and all that type of thing. We've done that a multitude of times on a couple of vehicles. So if you hop over on YouTube, you'll be able to find that information if you need it. Today's video is more about what goes into a GVM upgrade. So throughout to today's discussion, I'll probably talk about an SSM and an in-surface modification. So we'll talk about those first. There are two ways to get a GVM upgrade in your vehicle. One is before original registration, and that is through a secondary stage manufactured program, which is handled federally. Once a car has been registered um, into the state which it's used, then it becomes an in-service modification. Now, the big players in the game, Pedders, ARB, um, AEV, those guys, hold a secondary stage manufacturer approval for their kit. So that allows it to be applied to the vehicle before it's first registered. And the in-service side of things, we use that secondary stage manufacturer, SSM um, approved system as the basis of the in-service modification, albeit as, a, as another step to the process. As part of doing the SSM process, they have a look at a number of things. So one of the major things if you're increasing the weight of the vehicle is can the vehicle still stop? So they do an ADR brake test and they actually do a few different tests. It's looking at can it, um, can it decelerate the new load? What happens if there's a partial circuit failure if a brake line goes or that type of thing, as well as can the vehicle still hold itself up on the ADR specified handbrake hill. So obviously you increase the weight of the vehicle, you don't want the thing to now roll away when you park it on a hill. Those types of things are assessed. All modern cars have to have electronic stability control or ESC, and that is an electronic program to make sure that the vehicle stays stable and online whilst doing a very aggressive evasive manoeuvre. This has to be confirmed that it's still operational and hasn't been affected by the changes to the weight of the vehicle, the components fitted to it. And that's done with the steering robot, doing what's called a sign with dwell test. It's all very complicated and very technical, but it's part of what goes into the SSM to make sure the vehicle's ultimately safe. Other things that I looked at are component strength. So where components have increased load on them, things like diff housing, control arms, um, knuckles, all that type of stuff. They are FEA'd, so will the manufacturer will break down the components, they'll scan them to get their physical size, they'll measure the materials and that type of thing, and they'll evaluate whether they believe they can increase the load on those components safely and make sure they can handle Australian conditions. That's often done with finite element analysis to make sure the stress in them is not too high. Also, they go over the car and often because the vehicles are lifted, they look at the light positions as well. As you lift the vehicle, some of the lighting um, positions in the vehicle may become illegal outside of the ADRs and as such might have to be modified to comply. In some cases where they're moving from one vehicle category to another vehicle category, additional lights have to be added, particularly some of the big Land Cruiser modifications like this one, get moved from a passenger vehicle into a goods vehicle, and as such, you have to have some um, different indicators which come into, the, into the, um, the additional vehicle regulations. So there's a lot that goes into it. So that's what happens on the SSM side of things. On in-service modifications, there's a check sheet that the approved person has to go through. I'm an approved person for Queensland, so I'm quite familiar with the sheet. And it, also, it talks about in there, Things like, um, is the engine and transmission capable of the increased load? And one of the things which does get overlooked quite a lot is are the wheels and tyres suitable for the increased load? And that's one of the things I want to talk about today. As part of the GVM upgrade, you often increase the axle capacity. And when you increase the axle capacity, it means you're more likely to have higher loads go through your wheels and tyres into the ground from the weight of the vehicle. Now an OE wheel, as a general rule, does not have a rating stamped on the inside of the rim like this aftermarket wheel I'll show you in a minute. 
What that means is, all that can be assumed is that the wheel rating is half of the original axle capacity, which means if you increase the load on that axle, you need to look at changing the wheels to make sure that the wheels are strong enough to do the job. On this wheel here, this is an aftermarket ROH wheel. There's uh, a bunch of numbers that are cast inside the spokes on the wheel. Some of the information is stud pattern and PCD and um, center bore and that type of stuff. But on one of the spokes, on this wheel, it gives a rating of 3640 pounds. So that is the rating of the wheel in pounds. Sometimes it'll be in kilos as well. And that tells you the weight capacity of the wheel. I think that's about 1654 kilos for this wheel. So that means you, you double that and that's the actual load that you can have on it. So that's over um, 3.2 tonnes that you can have on this wheel. Oh, sorry, on an on a axle set of wheels. So that is something that needs to be looked at. Obviously, on top of that is the tyre as well. You need to make sure that the tyre's capacity, which is in the information on the sidewall here, also is higher than the new axle capacity rating. Lastly, on tyres, you also need to consider tyre size because the brake testing and the ESC testing that was done as part of the SSM also is done with a certain tyre size. So if you substantially increase that tyre size, it'll now mean that your braking isn't as effective and the ESC may be affected as well. So generally, as part of a GVM increase, you can't go past, a, um, go past the tyre diameter that was tested on by the SSM um, provider, that is PEDAS, ARB, AEV, those guys, and they'll be able to give you guidance on what that is. So this vehicle next to me is a GVM increased vehicle, a Land Cruiser. It's got an AEV upgrade, um, GVM increase to 4.2 tons, 4,200 kilos. It's got a two and a half ton rear axle capacity up from the 1940. 50, I think the original one is. So a considerable increase. On this particular vehicle, they decided that to get to that load that the original diff housing couldn't handle it. So it's been replaced by a custom fabricated housing, which is more than man enough to handle the two and a half ton axle capacity. Along with that, it's got springs and shocks and control arms that can handle the additional load. The front of the vehicle has a replacement control arms to retain the wheel alignment due to the change in the, change in the vehicle height. And finally, on this vehicle, we've got wheels and tyres that are compliant with the vehicle as it was tested. So a pretty comprehensive kit. In this case, the brakes didn't need upgrading. The factory Toyota brakes were capable of doing the ADR test without any modification. In some cases, they will need to be modified. That might be as simple as brakes and pads. In other cases, it might be a replacement caliper or brake booster system. So all these things you need to be aware of. All of the important information is stuck to the car somewhere. On this, it is on the B pillar. And because this is an SSM vehicle, so pre-registration, we have the federal sticker here, which shows it's a 4.2 ton GVM. The VIN number is here and the particular vehicle information, which ties it to this actual Land Cruiser. Then there's a tire placard here, an axle load capacity sticker. So that tells us what axle capacities the vehicle has with the modifications and the legal tire size that I can go up to that was done during the testing process as well as tire pressures and all that type of stuff. Now an SSM approval differs a little bit to an in-service modification in when, in the, when you come to sell the vehicle, an SSM approval is um, nationwide and nothing has to be done if you're selling it interstate. If I'm selling a Land Cruiser that's got an in-service modification with a Queensland mod plate on into New South Wales, it'll mean that if it's sold into New South Wales, it'll have to get modification approved in New South Wales after the registration has been transferred. So that's just something to bear in mind. So it just makes the pre-rego pathway a little bit um, more straightforward if you wanted to sell the vehicle later on. 
So that just about covers all things GVM upgrades. If you are interested in seeing more about the weights related to how we work out curb and payload and rear axle capacity and all that type of stuff, we've got a heap of those videos on YouTube, so check those out. And finally, if you do have any GVM related questions, chuck them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you on those. We've also always got heaps more Cruise Master classes coming out, so make sure you keep an eye out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to make sure you don't miss out.